The Complete History of Usagi Yojimbo Comic Books. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan, Usagi Yojimbo fan. Stan Sakai's Usagi Yojimbo is one of my favorite comic books. It ticks all of my checkboxes. It was a black and white independent comic from the 80s that's very collectible with a great plot and art. But it's much more than that. It's one of the longest running creator owned comics. It's been an action figure, a Saturday morning cartoon, a role-playing game, a video game, and soon a streaming series. So let's look back at the 35-year history of everyone's favorite rabbit bodyguard. This video will be a long loving look at the chronological history of Usagi Yojimbo and a guide to collecting his comics. I hope you enjoy it as I put a lot of effort researching it. Let's get started. We can actually link Usagi Yojimbo to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird kicked open the doors for many indie publishers in the 80s. They inspired a pantheon of creators to try their own hand at making their own black and white comics that didn't rely on the big two publishers. Think of it. Two comic book fans took their talents, some cash, and created a comic book that became an instant success. They created a long-lasting empire that made them famous and wealthy. Plus, their creation has stood the test of time. Stan Sakai has shared how the success of the TMNT inspired his own efforts. FYI, this is a new Stan printing of the Archie Comics Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures when the turtles got a little bit cuter. I showed here the original Mirage publishing when they were more dark and gritty. And this is issue number one, the very first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue. No, it's not the first printing, which is worth like $13,000. This is a fifth printing with a cool red wraparound cover. But anyway, let's talk about Usagi Yojimbo and Stan Sakai. Usagi Ojimbo, full name Miyamoto Usagi, has gone through a fascinating journey. If we go all the way back to Albedo Anthropomorphics issue number one, published in June 1984 by Stephen A. Galachi's company, Thoughts and Images, we'll find a prototype of Usagi, Nilsen Ground Thumper. Issue one features a self-contained story titled, Nilsen Meets Hermi, or We're Not Lost, Just Misplaced, where Nilsen meets Hermi, and hilarity ensues. If you read Stan's comments later, you'll learn that Nilsen was supposed to be a 2,000 page epic story and that Usagi Yojimbo would appear halfway through the story. He gave up on that idea and gave Usagi the spotlight. Nonetheless, you can see flashes of Usagi Yojimbo in this first story. Funny animal characters with fleshed out personalities and amazing art. Side note, Albedo is a series that needs its own video. Stephen A. Galachi created an amazing furry anthology that spanned over 20 years and defined early furry fandom, which resonates to today. There were many creators that were published in the various volumes of Albedo throughout the years. And it's a fascinating story to look up for yourself, whatever happened to Albedo Anthropomorphics. Issue number one had two printings. There was this second printing with a bright red cover. That was about a thousand copies. And there was also the much rarer 500 print run copy with a dull red cover. This is actually printed in a process that is not the usual CMYK colors. It also has a special green color. So Steve didn't really like how it came out. Um, it got reprinted as a bright red cover, but there is also the much rarer 500 print run. This one's from June 1984. The red cover is from September 1984. Both of them include that prototype of Usagi Yojimbo, Nilsen Ground Thumper. The first full appearance of Usagi Yojimbo occurred in the next issue, Albedo No. 2, published on November 1984 with the eight-page story, The Goblin of Adachi Gahara. 
we see the story fully fleshed out early on. In feudal Japan, a wandering rabbit ronin battles enemies both real and supernatural. Amazing art and story introduce us to the character and the world. There were plans for a second printing, but none ever happened. This first printing only has 2,000 copies in existence, and I have one. I was glad to get one of these a few years ago before the prices skyrocketed to astounding levels. I will take this comic to my grave. Albedo number three from April 1985 features part one of two of a two-part Usagi story, Lone Rabbit and Child, where Usagi meets reoccurring characters Tomoe and Lord Noriyuki. Usagi is not on the cover, but he's on the back cover with Japanese text. Yes, that does say Arubido, Albedo. I'm not sure what the rest of the kanji says though. If anyone can help me out and fully translate it, I would appreciate that. There's only a first printing of this. I've got a couple of them right here to show off the front cover and the back cover. Albedo number four from July 1985 has the conclusion of the Lone Rabbit and Child story. And he's featured on the cover. Stephen A. Galachi's Irma Felna story continues here, of course. I seem to have one and uh, two copies of this, while I have uh, one and two and uh, three and four of his uh, second appearance. I've got two copies of his third appearance, plus one copy of his first appearance. Albedo number five from October 1985 has a Nilsson story as he and Hermie have a misadventure with an invisibility cloak. It's interesting to see the contrast between this prototype character and Usagi. Nilsson had copious humor, Usagi is much more serious. Sakai would not continue Usagi's stories in Albedo after issue number four. The next appearance of Usagi is in Critters No. 1 from June 1986. Sakai had moved over to the more established Fantagraphics books at this point. This afforded him more exposure for the character that was quickly becoming the face of funny animal comics in the 80s, besides TMNT of course. Usagi made several appearances in Critters as the years went on. Not to show off, but let me show off. I have a couple of copies of Critters number one. I seem to have one, two, three, four, and uh, five copies of Critters number one. Critters is a series that needs its own videos. It lasted from 1986 to 1990, published 50 issues of this anthology series with a huge variety of talent, including such names as Sergio Aragones from Gru, Leela Dowling from Fusion, Sam Keith from The Max, and many more. It's a black and white series full of a variety of creators with a variety of styles, some more cartoonier than others. The final issue is a star-studded extravaganza with an Usagi story. I have uh, two copies of that one. Rest in peace, Critters. Fantagraphics saw they had a hot thing in their hands, so they published the Usagi Yojimbo Summer Special in October 1986. This is a wraparound cover and only has one printing. This book reprints his first appearance over at Albedo number two, as well as the Lone Rabbit and Child two-parter from Albedo three and four and an original story, The Confession. Even though Usagi continued to appear on and off in Critters, he was given his own solo series. Fantagraphics published Usagi Yojimbo number one, volume one, in July 1997. The series went on for 38 issues from 1987 to 1993. This series really fleshed out the story and characters. He even met the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at one point in issue 10, which makes it all come full circle. There was a second printing of a few of the early issues, including issue number one. There's the first printing, there's the second printing only distinguishable by the back cover listing it as second printing. 
Up until this point, Usagi Yojimbo had always been black and white in the interior pages. The first appearance of Usagi in color, however, is not in Albedo or Critters or even in his own book. It's in The Doomsday Squad Number 3 from late October 1986. Also published by Fantagraphics, this includes a new story, Village of Fear, and a horrible coloring job. No, Tom Luth did not mess things up. He's an accomplished colorist that has worked in comics for decades. He's colored Stan's work for over 30 years, as well as Sergio Aragonés and more. The printers did a bad job with registration. The colors are jumping out of the lines in a really bad way, kind of an eyesore to look at. The Village of Fear story would eventually be correctly colored in Usagi Ojimbo Color Special No. 1 from 1989. This comic properly printed Village of Fear along with a new tale, Tomoe's story, and early cover appearances. There's a Nilsson Ground Thumper story here too, and a Freddie Milton one. Some interesting things about the color special. The Indicia states November 1989, but then first printing July 1989. And that's important because there was a rare second print, aka the special edition. That one is only a 2000 issue print run and happened because the printers messed up again. So Fantagraphics got a deal to print 2000 more with a difference. The cover now is a heavy cardstock. It says special edition in the corner. The price went up 50 cents. The 16 page Fantagraphics catalog was removed from the center. The back cover has a new Usagi drawing and the inner back cover is blank for you to get a stand sketch at conventions. Also the indicia still states November 1989, but then first printing January 1990. Very interesting for all you completists like me. So I've got the regular first printing, about 10,000 print run or so, and I've got the 2,000 print run special edition before George Lucas, and I have another one of them. So complete my trifecta right here. There was never a third printing, but I've got uh, three of this uh, particular one. Need to get one more of the regular one because it's lonely because we've got two of the special editions, but the regular edition is lonely. Fantagraphics would publish a total of three color specials from 1991 to 1992. They feature some wraparound covers, some cool blue tones, until it moved over to Dark Horse Comics in 1997 with issue number four and five. But we'll get to those later. At a certain point, we see a slight shift in Stan Sakai's Usagi style. It's certainly evident here in the color special cover and would be refined over the years. His early style was a very cute and chubby Usagi, while his later style is a bit more svelte. After Usagi finished his 38-issue run at Fantagraphics, it moved over to Mirage Publishing. Yes, the same studio that published the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Volume 2 debuted on March 1993 and had a revelation. The interiors of each issue were in full color. Beautiful, beautiful, full color. The series only lasted 16 issues, however, from March 1993 to October 1995. I've only got two copies of the series. This is on my to-do list to complete the full issue run, 1 through 16 of Volume 2 of Usagi Ujimbo. At this point, we can take a side trip to space. Mirage published two miniseries in 1992 and 1993 titled Space Usagi. And that's exactly what it sounds like, Usagi Ujimbo in space. However, this Usagi is a descendant of Miyamoto Usagi. It was an interesting mix of feudal Japan and Star Wars. Dark Horse Comics published the third volume of Space Usagi 96. I have no issues of Space Usagi, so that's another thing I need to track down for my collection. Speaking of Dark Horse Comics, Volume 3 of Usagi Ojimbo premiered in March 1995 at Dark Horse Comics. Dark Horse is one of the longest running indie comic publishers of the modern era. Debuting in July 1986 with Dark Horse Presents No. 1, the company has gone on to publish many licensed works including Aliens, Predator, The Terminator, Star Wars, and many more. 
Plus, they were the home of Usagi Ojimbo from 1995 to 2018. That's 25 years in one publisher. Quite incredible. As you can see by the cover of issue number one, this was supposed to be a three-issue miniseries. But fans of Usagi kept it going much longer than that. Pretty fun to see that issue number two was the riff on Albedo number two cover. There was a reprint of issue number one years later in 2010 as part of the One for One series, which cost one dollar, actually cheaper than the first appearance of $2.95. I have a signed copy of Usagi Ojimbo number one that I got at San Diego Comic Con that year. It's a star-studded tribute to Stan Sakai's long-lived creation. It blows me away that Usagi Ojimbo lasted this long at Dark Horse Comics. The final three issues are a three-part series entitled Mousetrap, where Inspector Ishida and Usagi track down the leader of the Black Goblin Gang. The Indicia states 231 of a series. Volume 3 of Usagi Ujimbo lasted 165 issues before moving to another publisher in 2019. Interestingly, there was a final seven-part miniseries before the departure. Usagi Ujimbo The Hidden. The cover numbers them 1 of 7, 2 of 7, but the Indicia states Usagi Ojimbo Volume 3, 166, 167, 232 in a series, 233 in a series. The back covers feature some great painted artwork featuring some realistic depictions of the characters. This series ran from March 2018 to October 2018. It dealt with the historical accounts of Christianity in feudal Japan. Stan wove real-world history with his own tale of the wandering rabbit. And that brings us to Usagi Yojimbo Volume 4, published in June 2019. We have many firsts. The first time Usagi was published at IDW. The first time issue 1 had many variant covers. The first time since 1986 that issue 1 had a second printing. The first time that Tom Luth colors the interiors of an ongoing Usagi series. Yes, this is a return to a full-color ongoing comic. To be honest, I didn't love it at first. After all, Usagi has been in black and white over 95% of the time for 35 years. It took a little getting used to, but now I find it as right as eating sushi with chopsticks. The first storyline is called Bunrak. It's about evil puppets. Many variant covers from the likes of Walt Simonson, J. Scott Campbell, Charles Vest, Tessa Rose, Julie Sakai, and Kevin Eastman exist for these first issues. Side note, IDW, aka Idea and Design Works, is headquartered right here in my hometown of sunny San Diego. Issue 6 is a momentous issue. Dated as November 2019 and number 244 in a series, it's Usagi Ojimbo's 35th year anniversary. This book is amazing. It's an updated take on his classic first cover. It reprints the very first issue from Albedo number 2 also. The interiors are actually redrawn in the modern Usagi style. It includes 16 brand new story pages filling in more detail. I like the updated art of the old lady, as she doesn't look as creepy and out of place as the first time around, but I don't love as much the updated goblin. The final panel has Usagi walking away from the camera as opposed to the original that he had him walking toward it. I think redrawing him as going away is a better choice. His journey continues after all. This issue had some cool variants as well. There is the watercolor version of that classic cover. I always like seeing more complex art of a cartoony character. I have two copies of that. Actually, this one is signed by Stan Sakai right over here with a certificate of authenticity. It's not CGC graded, but it's got a certificate of authenticity, so that's close enough, right? And we got two of those. And we also have a beautiful foil reprint of the classic Albedo 2 cover. If you look very carefully, 
However, this seems to be retraced, not just a reprint in foil. Side note, Stan gives a shout out to the first appearance of Usagi in Albedo number no. 2, and mentions the publisher Thoughts and Images. But I was a little disappointed that he didn't mention the man behind the company, Stephen A. Galachi. I don't believe Steve has gotten enough recognition for his contributions to furry fandom and comic books at large. Check out stevegalachi.com where you can read the complete 500-page Irma Felna epic. And then pop over to his Patreon to show your appreciation. We love you, Steve. As of this video, IDW's Volume 4 of Usagi Yojimbo is going strong at 17 issues, which have contributed to Stan being inducted into the Eisner Award Hall of Fame in 2020. The Eisners are the highest honor in the comic book medium, well deserved. Issue 14 ends with a shout out to Tom Luth, as he retires from coloring comics. He's had a 30-year collaboration with Stan, coloring just about every cover, and the interiors for every issue of Volume 4. Enjoy retirement, Tom. You've earned it. Moving forward from issue 15, Hi-Fi Designs is the coloring studio. IDW also published Usagi Color Classics, starting on January 2020. These were full-color reprints of the original Fantagraphics run. So if you missed them the first time, here they are again in glossy full-color, with a short Julie Sakai backup story. There were seven of these issues. And speaking of reprints, IDW started publishing Usagi Yojimbo Wanderer's Road in November 2020. These are more color reprints of classic Usagi stories. What's unique here is that super hot artist Peach Momoko is lending her talent to these covers. I like this interpretation of Usagi. It's a perfect melding of Stan's foundation with Momoko's unique style. As of this video, there are four issues out. And I think that's a good place to stop. I think I've covered just about everything regarding Usagi Ojimbo's rich comic history. There are a few things I might have left out, such as a couple of video games, cameos in other people's comics and Saturday morning cartoons, action figures, and a role-playing game or two. Plus, as of this video, Netflix series coming soon. But that's a tale for another time. This has been VM Campos, Minasan, Ja Dewamata. <laughs>